Welcome back to the Arena Grand Prix Race Day, sponsored by Arena. Two of the three days are complete, and Swimming World's Jeff Cummings is on location at the University of Texas in Austin to bring us some live coverage. Jeff, let's get right to it. Tyler Clary is reported to be out of the meet due to a back injury. Yeah, I, I saw him on deck tonight, and he was saying that he injured his back, I guess re-injured it uh, during the 200 back prelims today. I actually didn't see the swim. Uh, I was busy talking to somebody during the 200 backstroke, so I didn't have the chance to actually see what happened. But he said it was pretty, pretty severe. He just can't, you know, pushing off the walls and kicking and everything. But he was walking around the deck tonight in final, so it's not bad enough that it's, you know, he can't, you know, do normal movements, but just so strong that he couldn't race tonight. Well, between Tyler and, and Ryan Lochte, hopefully these boys will be back together soon, or at least ready for 2016. It was pretty, it's pretty scary to think about that, you know, the two um, American, two, top two of American 200 backstrokers are now injured. Um, I don't know if that, you know, I don't think people like Ryan Murphy and Nick Noman are thinking good thoughts about that, but, uh, you know, it just kind of makes you wonder, you know, at least it's good that America has good backstroke depth if, you know, they're not on their, their game for 2014. Right, well, we hope for a quick recovery. All right, well, the first event of the night was the 400 IM, and it was great to see Caitlin Leverance back on top of the podium, and by a large margin, Jeff, 441. Now, her field was extremely young, 13, 14, 15-year-olds. What was your impression of the 400 IM? Well, the 400 IM has got to be tough to do in season when you don't have anybody to push you, and I actually asked this to Caitlin in an interview I did with her after the race, and she said, you know, yeah, it was tempting to just kind of just, you know, back off and just, you know, coast in for the win, but, you know, as a lot of people do with these in season meets, they're working on race, race practice. So she needed to swim hard, even though there's nobody there, which, you know, she's not going to get a big meet. She's not going to win by eight, nine seconds. So uh, she said she just kind of just told herself what she needed to work on, and she worked on it. And uh, I wasn't surprised. A lot of the people she's going to be racing in the Ford I am at Nationals are in college right now. So um, I think probably, you know, these next few Grand Prix until at least through the college season, She's going to have to swim by herself because a lot of these younger talents aren't at that level just yet. Yeah, that's a really good point. And it makes Nationals even more exciting that we'll have a full field there. But on the men's side, teammates Connor Dwyer and Us Maluli finished 1-2, 4-16 for Dwyer. Now, Jeff, with Phelps out of this race and more than likely Lochte because we know he's trying to get out of that 400 IM, where does this put the men for 2016, the U.S. men? I've never, I haven't really started looking that far ahead for the foreign I am, but you make a good point. If Ryan is trying to get out of the foreign I am and Michael will never do it again, I don't think. Um, I think that's why Connor Dwyer is stepping up. But just remember, Tiffany, we got Chase Kalich. I mean, he's the silver medalist in World Championships, and he's in college right now. That's why you didn't see him today. But Chase is working hard. He's training hard. Uh, he got his academic suspension cleared, so he's back in competition in time for NCAAs in a couple months. So Chase is going to be doing just fine. It's Now it's a matter of who's going to take that second spot behind Chase. Yeah, that's a good point. I think we, we can count on Chase to be up there, but that second spot is wide open. And uh, next was a 200 freestyle, and this was a fun one to watch. Katie Ledecky finally met her match tonight with Allison Schmidt. Now, we're used to, lately we've been used to seeing Ledecky and Missy Franklin go head-to-head, -head, so it was nice to see Schmidt in the race. 157 from both ladies, uh, with Schmidt coming out strong on top. Not in-season best for either of them, but Jeff, that was a great race tonight. Well, it was just great to see Allison Schmidt back in the pool and back on form. I, I don't think she looked at that 157 as a disappointment. I mean, she's get, this was her first meet since World Championship Trials, and we all know that she didn't swim up to par, so it was just great to see her back. And um, it, you know, I told her she didn't think it. She didn't agree with me. But I said this, you know, it looked like the old Allison Schmidt. You know, the Allison Schmidt we knew from the Olympics, where she went out and just raced hard. Um, you know, there's still some kinks to work out, but I think she's on her way back. And it's it's great to see that 200 freestyle in the United States for the women is going to be awesome. That 800 free relay is going to be incredible at the pan packs. Yeah, it, it is nice to see her back. I think she's just one of those swimmers that needed a little bit more of a break. 
uh, after the Olympics. So she's going to get back there, I have no doubt about it. And on the men's side, Yannick Agnell, he had a dominant performance, 145. He won by over three seconds and mainly did it in the front half. Jeff, that was a strong swim for Agnell, but where were the other men in that heat? Well, a lot of the other men in that heat, Usmaluli especially, they, you know, Us had just done the 400 IM, so he was a little bit drained. And nobody else is going to be able to go 145 in season. So Us is in a league of his own right now. You know, maybe if perform, uh, you know, that'll be a good competition for him domestically. But, you know, in the United States, Ryan aside, you know, Connor didn't swim the 200 free, so maybe Connor could have challenge him a little bit, but Connor doesn't really have that front end speed that Yannick has, so um, it would have been interesting to see how Connor would have swum if he didn't do the 200 before and I am, but um, that was a very impressive swim for Yannick. I, I didn't expect to see a 145. He really went after this morning, and I thought 146 one was about as fast as he was going to be able to go. Um, I, I, this means a lot of great things for Yannick when he gets to World Championships, but um, he's more focused, I think, on the form free. He's trying to get back to form on that, and um, I think this 200 shows that he's got the, he's got the speed for that 200 or the 400. And um, I'm really anxious to see what Yannick's going to do. It, it's obvious that his time with Bob Bowen in North Baltimore is doing great things for him, and not just for him, but for everybody else. He's had a great weekend so far, and and he showed he has the speed in the 200, but he was out fast at that 100 as well. So. I think he's going to have a great end of the season meet. And uh, next up was a 200 backstroke. Four Canadians in this final heat. Hillary Caldwell finished first, 210, followed by Dominique Bouchard and Megan Romano. Jeff, I was pretty impressed by Megan Romano's 213 in this event. Yeah, she. most people don't know that she is a backstroker as well. Uh, we know her for that great... Uh, her eight great freestyle relay anchoring abilities, so uh, we tend to forget that. And you know, with the great depth that we have, with people like Missy Franklin, Elizabeth Weisel, Elizabeth Pelton, Maya, Maya Dorado, on and on and on, people don't know that Megan Romano could be a great backstroker. I think if she put a lot of focus on it, she could be. So with people like Franklin, if right now she was kind of the one that was going to be looked at for the Americans and the Canadians kind of took advantage of that. It was a great swim for Hillary Caldwell, I have to say. She was the, the bronze medalist at World Championships, kind of a, maybe a little bit of a surprise. And she's, uh, she looks like she's continuing to uh, do well. And, uh, she's going to probably have a great Commonwealth Games and then come back and uh, race some pan packs. And I think she's going to be a force to reckon with. Yeah, I think that's, that's going to be a fun one to watch. Hopefully we can see her get down a few seconds to battle it out with Missy. All right, well, in the men's 200 backstroke, it was a three-way battle. Ryan Murphy, Jacob Pebley, and Arcady Vaichanin, all within three-tenths of a second, Murphy got the touch. Now, Jeff, is this how you thought the race would play out tonight? Not really. I, I thought that Ryan would be a little further ahead. Um, maybe it's just based on the way Ryan has been swimming. And Arcady Vianchanin, you kind of, he's kind of been up and down in season. You never know where he's going to be um, until he actually swims. So um, it was great to see him racing well. You know, he's the swimmer without a country right now. He's, he doesn't want to swim for Russia, so he's still kind of looking for a country to re represent at the Olympics in 2016. Um, I was more impressed with Jacob Pepley. He's kind of one of those people, when we talk about the 200 backstroke, we don't really mention his name very much, and I think we should start doing that. Um, especially if people like, uh, if, you know, if Ryan isn't back in full form this summer, if Tyler's back doesn't allow him to really be at his peak um, in time for Nationals, I think Jacob could really step up and do some damage. Ryan's obviously doing very well at Cal, and I think um, those two are just pushing each other to do a, a lot of great things. I can't, I can't wait to see what these two are going to do at NCAA Championships. They might go one, too. Well, like you said, no one's wishing... Uh Tyler Clary any any pain, but it, it does open that door, especially by Nationals. I'm sure he'll be fine by the Olympics, but Nationals are going to be coming up here quick that if he's not in shape, then it does leave that spot open. So that's going to be, that's going to be an interesting event to see play out. And last event of the night, it was a quick one. Veteran Natalie Coughlin does it again, 25-17, and same for Nathan Adrian, 21-89. Jeff, these two just seem to be unbeatable these days. Yeah, 
I, I was kind of surprised the way Natalie did that 50. She didn't have a great 100, and she talked about that. She didn't expect to do so well. And, um, you know, like Nathan, she's a very technical swimmer, and she really works on the little technical aspects that are really going to help her. As far as Nathan, I was kind of shocked. Uh, usually he's not the one leading at 15 meters, but he was leading at 15 meters, and he just didn't let up. You know, Anthony Irvin just didn't have that snap that he usually does, even in season. Uh, Nathan took advantage of that. Nathan's having a great meet. I, I, I think he's really got to be pumped for this summer, uh, not just in the 100 free. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I think the 100 free is the event I'm most looking forward to at Panpax because he and James Magnuson are, you know, having these virtual races with Magnuson going 47-7, Nathan going 48-2, and uh, that's going to be a great 100, but Nathan is really getting back to form in this 50, and I'm just really pumped to see what he could do, because I think he's really trying to find his footing now in the 50. He had some slip-ups in 2012, kind of gained it back a little bit in 2013, but 2014, I think, is really going to be Nathan's year. All right, Jeff, thanks for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow after the last day of finals. Looking forward to it, Tiffany. Thank you. And day three events tomorrow include the 200 butterfly, 100 breaststroke, 100 backstroke, and the 200 IM. Make sure to go to our event landing page on swimmingworld.com for complete coverage and interviews from the pool deck. Thanks for watching Race Day sponsored by Arena. I'm Tiffany Elias. We'll see you tomorrow.